here. As you can tell, I'm one of the fishwife food round about here. And I thought that I would tell you a wee story today. Well, I'm sure you can this one. It's one that my mama told me when I was a wee bairnie. Once upon a time, there was a fisherman. And the fisherman bathed in a wee tiny, tiny wee fishing pussy down by the shore. Oh, it was an incredibly calm wee place and they just had a wee fire in the corner and all the wind would blow in underneath the door. It was a very, very hard existence. They had nothing but wooden bowls to suck their bros out of in the morning and their porridge at night. And there was nothing that the fishwife wanted but for a better life for herself. And one day, down the fisherman went, down onto the shore. He took out his nets, which his wife had just mended for him, hauled them in, off he went in his boat. First time he pulled in his nets, there was nothing. And the second time he pulled them in, there was nothing but an old boot. But the third time that he threw out his nets and he said to himself, oh, well, he'd go hungry if it comes in empty again. He pulled in the nets. So heavy, and he thought, there must be a huge shoal of fish in here. And he pulled, and he pulled it in, and just as he managed to get the nets almost on board his wee fishing boat, he could see that in his net there was a fish. It was huge, and it was all of the colours of the rainbow yellows, and blues, and pinks, and golden colours of orange. And he just looked at it and he thought to himself, well, this fish is surely fit for a king. But before he could haul it out and bop it on the head, ready for the table, ready to mark it, the fish opened its mouth. And the fish looked at him. And the fish said, dear man, you look like you have a kind heart. Please, please, dinna kill me, for I am an enchanted prince. And I can grant you a wish. Oh, said the man. Oh, Mithy me. It cannot be true, is it? I said the fish. Why don't you just wish away? Oh, well, he said. Oh, my end dear love, my Annie back came. She's, I was wanted a bonny fish, co fishwife's cottage. Ken with the, the wee seat outside to mend my nets. And, uh, oh, how about old roses round the door and a wee space of land out the back for growing some some tatties and some carrots and oh chickens and inside because at the moment we, we eat off our bowls and you know a, maybe we could have some china and, and a new dress for her of course said the fish just you go home and everything will be just as you want it he let the fish go. Fish swam dark, dark into the sea, deeper and deeper, and he thought he'd never see it again. And the sun was shining on him as he went home and he hauled up his, his wee boaty up onto the shore. And as he started to walk up, gone was the wee hovel. There was this beautiful wooden door with a wee heart-shaped window in it. The roses all the way around the door. And his wife came to the door and she was standing there in all her glory and a wee, oh, a pro whalebone corset. And her hair was all piled up in her head with ribbons. And she said, come in. I don't know what's happened. This is magical. And she was so happy that the rose came back to her wee cheeks and he fell in love with her all over again. And she was happy, and he was happy, and all the neighbours were happy too, because along with the cottage with a fine bed and the fine crockery came a larder full of cheese and ham and bread and all sorts of fine things. Tea, ah, the wife of China. Well, she was happy for, for two months. And then she said to him, Johnny, you can us. That magic fishy. I think you've done yourself too hard. You should have asked him for me, or you're better than that. Yes, I would quite fancy a mansion up on the hill with some wee skivvy lassies to look after me. And I think a silk dress would do better than a new stripy pinny. And, eh, uh, aye, four-poster bed in uh, bone, bone china 
finer than these things. Look, the them's already cracked, you said. I'll go and see what I can do, he said, but um, I don't think we should ask this fish for too much. This time when he went down to the sea, it was a wee bitty choppy. He took out his nets and he started rolling out. But before he'd even cast his nets out this time, up popped the wee fish's head. Well, he said, I see your back. Yes, your royal fishy highness, he said to the, the fish. Um, it's my wife, you see. Um, she said that I should have asked you for a mare the first time. Did she? she said the fish. Fit she needed. Well, she'd like a, a mansion. She'd like servants. Um, jewellery and, and a fine body dress. And uh, mere than one room. And a clutchy mm -hmm. inside. <laughs> well. Okay, said the fish. Just you go home and you will find that she's got exactly what she wants. I hope I won't be seeing you again said the fish. No, 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 said the fisherman. Thank you, thank you so much. And off he went back home. And as he got out of his boats and he saw over the shore, he could see where their cottage had been. There was this great big mansion in the most beautiful of granite. Oh, with the slate and the, and the, oh, the gardens all the way around. There was rose bushes and oh, just all the new fine things. There was a, a horse and cart outside and as he went into the house, of course, his wife didn't come to the door. No, no, a wee lassie came along and curtsied and she said, Master, tea is almost ready. He wasn't sure about the cucumber sandwiches. He'd much rather have had some tatties and herring. But no, in came the wife and all of our silks with a brooch at the neck and the hair piled up. Diamond earrings this time. And she was happy. And he was happy. And Abdi was happy. For about a week. <laughs> <laughs> they were lying in bed this morning. Sunday morning. In a lion just before the kirk. You should have asked that fish for me, are you, Ken? Oh, and then he said, just let it go. I tell you. You should have asked for a mare. We could have had anything. Well, what do you want now? I'm not going back. I'm not going back. What do you want now? I want to be queen. I want to mark my own rules. I should be your majesty, not your ladyship. And she nagged at him. And she nagged at him. And she went on and on until eventually, after a week of this nonsense, he couldn't stand it anymore. And he put on his old fisherman's clothes because, you know, he was no lord of the manor. He was still himself. And he went down the harbour and he got into his wee fishing boat. Even though he had no need to fish these days, he still went out every day. And he rowed out and the sea was dark and it looked like a storm was brewing. And he'd hardly rowed out of the bay when up rose the fish. You're back. Uh, um, I didn't think I'd see you again. I really didn't. I thought she would be happy. I thought, I thought she'd be content, but she's nay. Well, what does she want? Said the fish. She wants to be the queen. She wants to make her own rules. She wants a crown. She wants plates made out of silver and she wants a golden goblet to drink out of. And what do you want? Said the fish. I want what my wife wants. I just want her to be happy because, despite everything, I love her. And I said the fish, just you go home. And the fish slipped back into the sea. And the husband rode home. And he couldn't have found his house. Because there, instead of the wee hovel, instead of the wee cottage, instead of the great mansion house, there was this massive, great big hill with wood and trees and gardens all around it. And at the top, there were soldiers all marching around because this is now where the Queen of Scotland lived. And she came out with the scepter and the orb and she made him bow. You can fit though. She was happy. She was, she was genuinely happy. She had everyone come and bow at her feet. And she met the Queen of France 
and the King of Spain, and uh, yeah, she was quite delighted for a bit of work. Yeah. And this morning, the husband, who'd taken to sleeping in the pigsty, but he was more comfortable with folk that were actually, beasts that were actually politer to him than the wife, was summoned by one of the servants. You should have asked for mayor, she said. You should have got more out of that fish. I want to be queen of the universe, empress over everything that exists, and I want more power than that way fish. I want to be control of magic and planets. Go, she said. And this time there was no week of deliberating because all of the soldiers were there pointing their guns at him and their muskets. And off he went, still dressed in his fisherman's clothes. Down he went to the harbour. Out he went. The sea was so choppy. The sky was black. He feared for his life, but the fish came up. And the fish said, what does she want now? And he hung his head and he said, I can't believe it's come to this. She wants to be Empress of the universe. She wants power over everything and everyone, including yourself. Okay, said the fish. No problem. Just you go home and you'll see that she's got exactly what you deserve. The sea went quiet. The fish slipped below the waves and the sun came out. And the fisherman rode home. And for the first time in a few weeks, there was a a swelling in his heart, he felt quite happy, and uh, he got home. And instead of the great big hill, with the castle on top, or the mansion, or even the cottage, there was an old hovel, and his wife sat, pinging at the door. In our rags, with the wooden clogs on, and the wooden bowl to drink from. I've not got anything, she said. There's nothing left. Don't I worry, lass, he said. You've got me. Apparently, legend tells, the two of them lived happily ever after. <laughs>